Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here. I'm a registered EEG technologist, and in today's video, we're gonna look at a patient who's having temporal lobe seizures in their sleep. Now, this one's interesting because they had a family history of temporal lobe epilepsy, and their seizures were well controlled until they turned 53. When they turned 53, they started having these seizures in their sleep that weren't being controlled by their medications, Topamax and Lamictal. So they got put on long-term EEG monitoring and they actually had a couple of those nocturnal seizures in their sleep and let's look at them now. So when we open up the record, we see there's some crazy activity going on here, but in fact, it's just FP2, an electrode on the forehead being moved, the wire or being touched. That's what's creating all that crazy activity. Now we can scroll on, keep going. And if we look at the background rhythm, we'll count and it'll be about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine waves per second in the alpha range, which is normal. And we got more of FP2 being touched or moved. As we scroll on, we start to see a little bit of onset of some muscle activity in the left temporal region. There begins to be a little bit of an asymmetry. So if you compare the right temporal region here on the bottom to the left temporal region, you can see that on the left side, it's higher amplitude. The waves are going up higher. You got some rhythmic activity, you got some, some intermixed spikes in there as well. So you can tell that the seizure is happening on the left temporal region and not happening on the right side. So this patient's epileptogenic focus zone, I would say, would be in the left temporal region. And that lines up with the history of their family members also having temporal lobe epilepsy. The EEG tech who was looking at this and the doctor, they said there's no clear clinical signs during these seizures. So there's no clear outside movements, no jerking, no none of that. But they also noted that the patient was under the covers during this event. So mm, if they were having any movements, it would be covered up by their blankets, unfortunately. So one thing in the epilepsy monitoring unit, if you go to a hospital, a lot of them, or the ones that I worked at, they don't want the patient to have that many blankets or be covered up that much because at least half of an EEG is the video. Now, unfortunately, we can't look at the video here because, you know, patient privacy and all, but you also have the, the brain waves, which shows seizure, but you also have the video as well. So you got to take everything into account when determining whether something's a seizure or not. Uh, because if you have the data, you might as well use it, guys, to make a more informed decision. Now there's the end of the seizure. If we look at the trends panel, let's say you're looking at this 24-hour study and you're looking for the seizure. You're going to want to look for a flame, which represents a seizure. And this patient, they're having their events in the left temporal region. So the flame is gonna be maximal in the left temporal region. It burns the brightest, it burns the hottest, especially compared to the right temporal. You can see a clear difference in the intensity of the flame. And on the amplitude, the left side is represented by the blue line and the right side is represented by the red line. In the beginning, that non-brain activity, that artifact we saw in the beginning that was making the record go crazy. That was on the right side, which is why the amplitude is higher on the right side in the beginning. But once the seizure started, the amplitude on the left side became much higher than the amplitude on the right side, which makes sense if you're thinking about what we were looking at earlier with the left temporal seizure. It's on the left side. Obviously, that's going to be higher amplitude. In this case, now if we look at it one last time, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Yes, these waves are definitely higher than these waves. You can tell by the fact that they're actually kind of overlapping a little bit because they're that high of amplitude. 
to lower the sensitivity. There you go. Now they're not overlapping as much, but I like to have it on, on seven microvolts per millimeter sensitivity. That's standard settings. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this guy, this patient, guys. So left temporal seizure, good to note. Uh, one last thing. In, in this record, the doctor said no seizures were noted by the computerized software, which is a little disappointing. I was expecting a little more because, you know, there's not really any artifact going on or anything that could trick the computer. I don't know why their seizure detection software didn't detect this, but, you know, there's going to be a lot of false positives and a lot of seizures missed by the computer. So it's up to us guys to go through these records, use everything at our disposal, whether it be the trends, looking for the seizure flames, or just looking at it the traditional way, going through the record like this and recognizing the seizures, telling the doctor, labeling it for the doctor, making it easy as possible for them. And that, my friends, is this presentation on a left temporal seizure of this patient who's having them in sleep. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. I appreciate it, guys, and I'll see you all on the next video.